Now we look at the issue of identity confidentiality that uh, that needs to be provided by the LTE system. And as we had covered previously, we had we had framed this uh, framed this in the sense that you have that the an operator has a subscriber, which is Princess Diana, and and the subs and the operator needs to make sure that the paparazzis which are hanging out around everywhere in in the network with their flashlights and their cameras do not know where princess diana shows up and princess diana's identity is in the sim card and that identity is the imzi which is the international mobile subscriber identity and it, and the network should be should provide mechanisms so that the IMSI cannot be seen by these paparazzis uh, that are hanging out everywhere in the network uh, to, to try to see whether the IMSI is being sent over the air or not. And let's see how, how well the LTE system is uh, defined to provide this kind of identity confidentiality. So when the mobile shows up in the network, we do know that what happens on the on the radio on, on the radio level is that the E node B goes ahead and creates a radio network temporary identity, a cell radio network temporary identity, which is a new identity which is created every time the mobile creates and a mobile creates an RRC connection. And this is not related to any permanent identity that, that the mobile has. So this is a 48 bit random, this is a 48 bit number that gets created every time the mobile attaches. The E node B has no idea what the permanent identity of the mobile is. And this, this radio network temporary identity is sent over uh, the, the radio but based on this radio network temporary identity anybody listening on this radio interface doesn't know who the real what the identity of, of what the real identity of the mobile is so the signaling radio bearer zero gets created the rate cell radio network temporary identity is provided um, then signaling radio bearer one is created and also the backhaul link is created the s1 ap connection is created between the mobile and the mme and some more details if you're interested on this you can go back and and listen to the lte attach lectures on how this is being done though it's not that critical for for the security aspects that we are covering over here once the signaling radio bearer one is created, that is where the IMZ is sent by the mobile to the network in the attach request. And this IMZ, for the very first time when the mobile shows up in, in the network, is sent in the clear. So this is the only time where IMZ is being sent in the clear and so if there is a paparazzi out here listening trying to figure out if um, Lady Diana has shown up, uh, Princess Diana has shown up, can for the initial attach find out that this is actually Princess Diana showing up if the paparazzi knows the IMZ of, of Princess Diana. So. So the, the IMSI is sent in the clear only once and that IMSI comes to the MME. The MME sends the IMSI to the HSS and does the authentication. And once the authentication is done, uh, you also go ahead and set up the signaling radio bearer number two, which is used for sending NAS messages. The initial IMSI is sent by sent over uh over over the, the rrc message srb1 and then and then you create signaling radio better too uh, in in the meantime in the network you create the gtpc connection between the mme and the s gateway you provide the imz to the s gateway and imz is also provided to the p gateway so imz in the core network is shared between all these nodes but these are uh, nodes that belong to the operator and there is 
and and these are supposed to be in a secure part of of the network so this this part of the network is standing in some data radio and it's sorry it's standing in some in some data center and is all kind of in a in a secure environment so so the mz is being shared over here but once the once the in during the attach procedure the MME then goes ahead and creates a globally unique temporary identity, the GUTI as it's so called, and that GUTI is provided to the mobile in the attach accept and it is sent encrypted. So it is sent only after over the radio after this, after the SRV2 is encrypted and over the NAS signaling, which is also encrypted. Uh, between the mobile and the UE. So nobody listening either over the radio interface or even the E node B knows what the globally unique temporary identity is. The globally unique temporary identity has a format which is shown here. It actually has the mobile operator code, which is the mobile country code and the mobile network code followed by the MME identity, which is the MME group identity and MME code, which is shown over here. So together with the uh, MCC MNC and the mobile group identity and the mobile code, this is called the globally unique MME identity, GUMI as it is called, globally unique MME identity, um, GUMI. And after that, after that is the temporary mobile uh, subscriber identity, which is a 32-bit number that is used as an index to the context of this particular mobile in the MME. So th th this is actually kind of in in a way is is. Um, the, the naming the, the format of the GUTI is pretty much first the, the name of the MME is 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 attached first followed by the specific name or specific index for the UE. So this is more like the subscriber name where you put in Ali as a subscriber name and then the name following that. Or if you do change an MME from one MME to another MME, you would, for example, the surname changes to Bush, and then after that is the first name W or or whatever names are are there after that. So that that's the that's the way the GUTI is being created. Is is the part of the GUTI is the MME identity itself followed by the um, by the index uh, to the to, to, of the index of the context that is being stored uh, for for this mobile and there are multiple mobiles there will be a different mtmz for each of the mobile uh, for each of the mobiles that the mme is serving um, this it's it's interesting to keep track of this uh, GUTI format because we will kind of cover that in some way when you do provide when the mobile provides a GUTI to the network you can find out which MME is serving this particular mobile in in the network. So so this GUTI is the one that is used from here on and the IMSI is not sent over the radio e even in the encrypted form once a GUTI is, is has been created. Um, one other part that that uh, is interesting to keep in mind for this identity confidentiality this mme code along with the mtimz this together is called the stimz and neither the m nor the s has any um uh, has has the acronym doesn't have any any uh, any expansion it is it is just m temporary mobile subscriber identity or S temporary mobile subscriber identity. Uh, this S is is used for paging. So if the mobile, if the uh, MME needs to page the UE when the UE goes idle and we will cover this idle and active during uh, the power management parts of it. So for paging, what is sent over the air is the S which is the mobile MME code 
followed by the mtmz which is again a temporary identity which can change the guti can be changed by the network and actually it is recommended that the network keeps changing the guti uh, quite often because if you don't change the guti part of the part of the guti the stmz can be can be found out can be heard over over the network and if you if you repeat the stmz lot of time you are providing information about a particular mobile being being in a in in a region so the stmz is used by the mme for paging it is also the identity that the ue provides to the network when it does a service request so when and, and a service request is is a is is a nas message that it sends to the network when it goes from idle to active so in an idle to active trans transition for sending messages uh, it it provides the stmz uh, in the clear over over the network so uh, so 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 these are the temporary identities which are being used and in order to protect the imz from being sent over the radio network but we do know that the imz is sent in the clear uh during the very first attach uh, but not during subsequent attach uh, the guti is the one that is being used now with all of these concepts put together we now look at at a call flow which brings all of the, which brings all the security concepts together along with 